Hey yo, what's good family? Y'all already know who it is. It is your boy Thesis. We back for another episode. This is episode number seven. And in this episode, we're going to dig into a special request. So shout out to my boy S. Black, Stacy Black. Uh, he basically asked, he said, Thesis, so what's a good setting for EQ for beginners and the right mics as well as other uh, instruments or other uh, plugins that will work well when you're recording, right? Uh, so basically, uh, we're going to, you know, submit to this request and I have a sessionist up here. Uh, shout out to my boy again, Nonfiction. Uh, he had the session. Uh, this track is actually out already. <clears throat> um, so basically, if you want to uh, get this track, it's on every major retailer outlet everywhere. Um, and he actually acts a video out. So check the video out, man. It's a real cool fly video. Um, but uh, basically what we're going to dig into today is some of the presets and some of the settings that I use prior to recording. So let's start off with first the mic, right? The mic that I have is an AKG mic. I've had this mic for over, eh, I'll say about maybe 10 or so plus years. Um, it has not failed me yet. Uh, it's a workhorse. Um, and everybody has a specific type of mic. So um, I won't get into this mic is the better mic, that mic is the better mic, you get this mic, yeah, you get this mic. I'm not going to do all that. Everybody has a specific preference. If you want the best mic to record, my opinion is a Newman, right? Of course, those are the industry standards, but everybody does not have Newman money. So, uh, you want to find a mic that is uh, suitable for your recordings. You have ribbon and you have condenser. Uh, Again, preference, mine is a condenser mic, uh, not too uh, fine with, you know, the ribbon and mics and stuff like that. So my advice is to really, really look into, uh, you know, what type of mic is good for vocal recordings uh, for your, you know, what you're trying to do. And that's how that would start. Uh, but once you get your mic situation out of the way, then you want to make sure that you have outboard gear. The reason why I say you want to have outboard gear is because, let's say, for instance, you have this mixer here. You have this setup, right? You have all your channels, you have all your effects you want to use, and then let's say you start putting all these effects in, right? But let's just say by happenstance you have a computer that cannot handle all of that processing power that you're trying to push through your DAW. Uh, you have some standard computers that might be 500 gigabyte for hard drive space, and then your RAM might be maybe 4 gigs, and you might have a quad core processor, right? Now, um, mine's is a i7. Um, processor with 8 gigabytes of RAM that is expandable to 16 so I'm actually going to boost that uh, so if you have more RAM it's more processing power that you can handle all these plugins but you don't want to necessarily do that because then once you start to mix then you have the you know opportunity of your dog crashing and then all this stuff right here starts it just gets real funky and it's just real crazy so the outboard gear helps out and alleviates all that if you can't get a higher end computer um, so you can get something like a Behringer, right? And uh, I have a Behringer tube warp, tube amp, and which is right there. And I have a Behringer four channel compressor. And what I do is I put these two together and it creates this nice warm vocal that's compressed as a signal before it even goes into my DAW. So I don't have to use, you know, a whole lot of effects, uh, presets, things of that nature. I don't have to overwork my computer, right? So as you can see, anytime I use my vocals on any vocal, I put a deesser. You say, why do I put a deesser? Well, deesser does exactly what that word does. It takes out all the S's, all the T's, all the pss, pss, stuff like that. Um, you have some people who record and don't have you know, a, uh, a um, filter to catch all the, when you, you know, well, it catches the spit and stuff, but sometimes it depends on the filter you get. It might take out some of the S's and some of the T's and some of the puff, puff, puff you know, sounds. Uh, but a deesser uh, basically does that. And what I do is I put that on every uh, vocal. And in Cubase, you know, it's a different setup. Um, so you might have to add the audio. Once you add the audio track and then, you can go inside of your mixer on the second part, F3, and just hit, you know, put your plugins there. 
Uh, they have some DSs there, but for me, Pro Tools is the best DSer out there. It's an industry standard. Plus, if you're recording a session and you want somebody else to take over the session, um, you know, for mixing, mastering, whatever purposes, you know, Pro Tools is always the standard. So my next step is what I usually do. I do a vocal cleanup. So the EQ in Pro Tools goes like this. You have a lot of presets that you can use for vocals. So you can add air, thickness, presence, you know, uh, you can solidify the vocal, things of that nature. But for this sake of this tutorial, I just wanted to show how, you know, I clean up the vocal. And what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to bypass the, uh, the ISSER and I'm going to bypass the actual EQ so that you can just hear exactly what the vocal sounds like without the mixing done to it. All right. So let's solo these real quick the table we eating good god giving grace alfredo and fettuccine all on my plate no steak i got no time for the beef i put them all in a place like we in real estate god did it make no mistake and you know it's him so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to it with the effects on yeah at the table we eating good god giving grace Alfredo with fettuccine all on my plate. Anyway, um, so basically in the mix, I just wanted to make sure that the highs and the bottoms was real good. If you take out a little bottom to mellow out uh, some of the person's vocal, you just got to know uh, the person's, you know, how the recording is. Listen to how they're recording. And if the person has a lot of bottom in their uh, rap, which, you know, nonfiction does, uh, usually what I do is I just drop a little bit of bottom out raise a little bit of the high and it basically sounds like a nice clean vocal right uh, so let's say on this one you have a lot of reverb where you want to use reverb on every channel this goes back to your processing power um, you can save a lot of processing power if you bust your reverb very important so if you take this reverb here and you go and say for instance you put it on every channel right you put it on every channel, you're basically killing your computer. I mean, you're just, you're not gonna have a good session, you're not gonna have a good recording, it's just gonna be too much. I don't care what type of computer you have. You can still save a lot of space, a lot of time, and a lot of mixing if you do this step I'm ready to show you here. So what you do is, is that you create a uh, auxiliary bus, right, which is right here. You go in and you name your bus a reverb bus. So you just go here and you just rename it, right? So you rename it as a reverb bus, and then you pick whatever insert of your plugin that you want to do, which will be this one, this specific one I use was just a regular standard, you know, vocal reverb. And instead of putting it on every channel, what you do is you go to your sends, and now you pick the actual bus and your reverb bus. Why you do that thesis? Well, one, I'm saving a whole lot of processing power. Two, Every vocal I'm using is going to pretty much have the same reverb on it. So why not use a bus to bust the reverbs? This is for beginners now. I'm not talking to people who are intermediate who already knows this stuff. I'm talking specifically to people who don't know anything about recording, about bussing. This is for you guys. So if you have a standard mixer where, you know, you're just going and you want to put all these effects on, it's easier just to bust it. And then you go into your sends and you take your reverb bus and put it in there. And you can put it on every channel. It still saves so much processing power. And not only that, it keeps the same settings that you have across the board. So um, that's usually what I do for when it comes to, you know, uh, vocals. And because I do my vocals and uh, all my stuff in Pro Tools, I also create a master bus. So I go to the master bus, and on the master bus, what I do is I just put a uh, T-Rex on it and go to my settings, and then just add a master one setting on it. And then what that does is, is that once I am recording, I'm recording everything into the master bus of what's gonna be mixed, and that setting right there will basically add to whatever I'm doing for each vocal or whatever each track is. It just makes it so much cleaner. Um, so I'll let you hear a little bit of uh, the mix of what I've done with this one. I 
I've been killing it. Sorry for your losses. Been throwing my cross up cause I'm nauseous. Yeah, in all black, texting in all caps. Shout out to my haters, you'll never get a call back. Yeah, no more need of stressing. I'm just focused on the blessings. The naked truth is how I dress it. I lay it all out in my session. So as you can see, you have the perceived loudness and all of your RMS to make sure that you're not out of a range. And as I'm playing the track, that's how I do when I'm mixing it. If you're in the red, automatically you should know that that's not good, right? Of course. So you do all of the capable things that you do to make sure that you're not in the red. Uh, basically, man, uh, for those who are looking to record, uh, when it comes to vocals, you want to just make sure, again, that you have a good mic, that you have a good tube amp, that you have a good compressor, that are outboard sources first prior before making sure that your signal goes into your DAW. Right? Once again, man, this is episode seven. Go through, subscribe, also follow us on uh, Instagram, and also make sure that you follow me on Twitter. If you guys got any more questions, any more uh, things you want to ask, hit me up, man. I got you. Once again, y'all already know who it is. It is your boy, Thesis. Ho, 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 ho.